Welcome to this Care Collab. I am teaming up today with the Orchid Saga and Karin's Orchids, featuring Rincatlianthe Fushu Glory. Happy holiday. So based on that name, let me already wish all of you a happy holiday because who knows what content will follow and maybe I will forget <laughs> to say happy holidays to everybody watching this video. Beautifully named orchid, very fitting for this time of year. And to be honest with you, I have always wondered why she was called Happy Holiday because mine used to bloom at the end of August, beginning of September. But here we are now and she is in bloom. And I am starting to understand if this is her normal bloom cycle time of year to bloom. Happy Holiday is very, very fitting as you can see by the color of the blooms. I think this makes perfect sense now. So Fushu Glory, happy holiday. Once again, welcome and thank you to the Orchid Saga. Thank you to Kyron's Orchids for joining in on this care collab. The links to their videos will be in the description below. Mine happens to have four blooms this year. The best spectacle ever. She is slightly fragrant, and as the sun comes out, the colors get a little bit washed out, but the next cloud will bring us back to a proper display and representation of the orchid. Very slightly fragrant. I would say more of a plastic fragrance with a bit of hint of Cattleya floral rose, but it is not predominant. It is not obvious. It is not something that would make one want to buy this orchid. The fragrance itself doesn't say much. It's a bit meh, a bit bland, but the blooms themselves do give a lot of pleasure. And you can see how the spike is drooping down a little bit because when it was time to bring this orchid indoors, she was in bud and the change from the east side location where she normally lives to the top shelf of my winter indoor grow space that was a little bit precarious and that is why her spike is drooping a little bit because her light source was lower than where she is living. Still, it turns out that she has corrected herself now that she is on the blooming alley side of my indoor space. She has corrected herself and is giving a beautiful presentation. I was looking up at her for many, many weeks being able to take some footage as the blooms develop. And as the blooms develop, the petals and sepals all look a little bit green, like light green. So a color changer in a sense, but not in the real interpretation of color changer. It's just when the blooms are immature, they come out a little bit green. And then after a week or so, they start to present themselves with the beautiful flare of yellow along the petals and sepals. Even though the sun is shining, we can now clearly see that. And I must say that the fact that this orchid is doing what she is doing is the reason why she is in my collection. Because the orchid itself is not beautiful to look at. I have made many, many mistakes with her. So let's get into that. Let's start with light. She is a bifoliate. So, light, well, in my experience, at least here in southern Spain, I do have some very harsh light, but bifoliates, in my experience, are not as high light tolerant as other orchids would be, considering that they are a Cattleya alliance. I find that giving them too much light causes damage on the leaves, as is in this case. Also, treating with insecticidal soap back in the day, year ago, this time last year, caused the cells to collapse. So she is fussy in two ways, at least in my climate, that she doesn't like to have a lot of light touching her leaves and definitely nothing industrial when it comes to pest prevention. So in the summer, I try to now counteract that by putting her behind a white curtain so that she still gets bright light, but no direct sun. And in the winter, I try to keep her on the top shelf, A, because of her size. And secondly, she is far, far away from any blurple lights burning her leaves. 
The reason I've got this sunburn is, as I mentioned, she used to bloom for me in August into September, which is the hottest part of my year. And in my blooming alley, sometimes based on the angle of the sun, a little bit of direct sun will hit the leaves, hence, the damage. It's a shame because she is holding on to her leaves for a very long time, so you have this blemish. She's not the most beautiful to look at when she's not in bloom. However, a second growth is already maturing. Having learned my lesson, the leaves are clean, perfect, and there is another sheath in there, and that sheath also has buds. So that we're going to be seeing a lot of my happy holiday in the coming weeks because, well, these blooms will last now about four weeks, if not five, based on the fact that her temperatures are much, much lower during her current blooming cycle. And my temperatures right now in the winter will be a steady 15 degrees Celsius where she lives indoors. I only brought her outdoors to film. So 15 degrees in the winter, day and night, but in the summer, well, she has to tolerate temperatures all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius, which is not standard. It is a little bit rare to get 40 degrees Celsius, but that is my maximum. My major concern with her right now is making sure that she stays well fertilized without getting any salt accumulation on the surface of my pot. Seeing as she's still working on a few more buds, I don't want them to blast. Normally, if this was her only spike at this point in time, I would have stopped fertilizing completely because there will be no more new growths until spring comes around again. So this is the challenge for me at the moment. One new growth developing a sheath with buds in it. Which brings me to the fertilizing factor that I'm currently doing in winter, which is 160 parts per million every time she absorbs her reservoir which is not a fast absorption rate. And that is quite concerning because too much fertilizing is going to cause a problem on the surface of the pot. It's a fine balance at the moment, but 160 parts per million is the current norm. Whereas in the summer when she is growing her new growth, it's a full on 300 parts per million. Her roots and everything are being produced at the same time as the growth is growing. That's why 300 parts per million to get those growths growing really well. Let's go into a little bit more depth about why there's a funky growth right here, which also bloomed with super funky looking blooms. Well, one of them was distorted, but it did bloom. What happened here, in my opinion, was an overdose of seaweed. I do add supplemental seaweed into the pot on occasions, and the rest of my collection seems to be quite happy with how much seaweed I add into the pot to supplement and give them a little bit of a hormone and growth boost. Not this one. My normal seaweed rate is 40 parts per million, and this one just didn't appreciate that at all. This orchid, I would say, is vigorous in her own right. Her only needs are a lot of calcium, magnesium, because you will also see that some leaves are showing the deficiency of magnesium back here. Those light blotches, that is magnesium deficiency. So she's not a big fan of the seaweed, even though we like to believe that we're doing the right thing by applying seaweed and giving them a little bit of a boost. This one, in my opinion, did not appreciate that at all. So moving forward, after this growth had developed, the next growth that is back here also bloomed. I backed off on the seaweed entirely, but what I didn't do is because normally I mix my seaweed and calcium magnesium supplements together, I also backed off on the calcium and the magnesium supplements instead of providing that to her separately. And you can see once again, magnesium deficiency. So in my case, I have to make sure that this orchid gets enough calcium and magnesium, stays out of direct sun, doesn't get industrial pest treatment products on it, as in this case here. So it's actually one of those little special divas of bifoliates that really needs a little bit of a different treatment, a little bit tweaked as opposed to the general treatment I give throughout my Cattleya collection. Now, that is not a problem. 
having learned my lesson and I can see that everything else with regards to the new growths, the one that's just blooming, the leaves are fine, they're looking great and the back new growth, same thing. This took me approximately three years to figure out because if it wasn't one thing that crept up, it was the next thing. So when it comes to pests, this one, I don't know what it is. It's a scale magnet in my opinion. I have had issues with this orchid because I have constantly had to tackle scale. These are all dead, thank goodness. And how I'm going about it now is just applying garlic infused alcohol. And since I've been doing that since 2021, whatever is returning or trying to manifest itself on my orchid is dead. And now that was the last of the scale remnants from earlier in the season. And I am so glad to be filming this video because I wanted to show you that this orchid does attract scale, even though I show you a clean orchid. Um, that doesn't make much sense. And now I can wipe all those little dead bodies off, which is going to make me very, very happy because I'm always a little bit paranoid that the scale will come back. You can see even down here at the base, all the dead bodies. Now I can go in with garlic alcohol and a paintbrush and wipe them all off. And then I don't have to worry whether these are reoccurring new ones or whether they are dead. So my Fushu happy holiday here, I have to say, yes, love her. She grows well for me, but wow. When it comes to divas and bifoliates, this one is in that category. All these little extra approaches of how to grow this orchid, in my opinion, those are her quirks. No industrial pesticide at all, no seaweed at all. Definitely a lot of calcium and magnesium to be supplemented so that even if your fertilizer has enough calcium magnesium in it, which mine does, it was not enough at the point when I didn't supplement with calcium and magnesium. And the new growth of the previous years clearly show the signs of magnesium deficiency. So those are her quirks. She is a diva. Not all bifoliates really are divas, but in this case, I would say definitely, definitely knock out the seaweed, don't apply it. This orchid doesn't need it and actually doesn't like it. Apply a lot more calcium and magnesium than you would think, even if you have a balanced fertilizer. In her growth habit, she is super, super vigorous. She's already been divided twice since I've had her in my collection. The reason I have to divide my orchids is because of my limited indoor space when it comes to winter. It is fun to grow orchids eight months of the years outdoors, but when it comes time to bring them in, there's always that margin of space, which is an issue. So vigor is not an issue. I have divided her twice. She still bloomed despite the stress of division. I always make sure though, however, being a bifoliate, that before I do any radical cleanup of the pot, I already see signs of new root growth because considering how finicky she is with regards to not appreciating seaweed and needing more of the supplemental calcium and magnesium, I can imagine that this orchid would have a serious issue, a setback, if divided, repotted, cleaned up without new roots already forming as backup. I have a feeling that this one would then dump all its roots and suddenly become a setback or a stalled orchid while she recovers to bring out new roots. So keep that in mind. I personally cannot vouch for that as a fact, but it is just my assumption based on everything else I find that this orchid is fussy about. But she is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now that I have gotten to know what she dislikes, everything else from here on in is just going to be a fabulous, harmonious relationship between my Fushu Glory Happy Holiday and myself. <laughs> I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that my mistakes or my learning curve with regards to her dislikes are helpful to you. If you're getting this orchid in new, you already know what to do moving forward. 
And if you have this orchid and it has been acting up on you a little bit as well, well, maybe these little quirks of her dislikes is something that will help you as well to understand how to best grow her and make her look like a happy plant instead of, you know, looking like she has been through the ringer for years and years and years. <laughs> Thank you to the Orchid Saga. Thank you also to Karin's Orchids for joining in on this care collab. I really appreciate your time and everybody that has watched this video. Your time is also very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition, please. That you stay safe and take care. Bye. Bye.